357 homeless people have died in the last five years in Dublin. That's the equivalent loss of life of a transatlantic flight falling from the sky. It's a catastrophe, and it's happening silently and invisibly every other day on the streets that we live in. There were 47 deaths across homeless services in Dublin in 2018, 49 in 2019, 76 in 2020, and last year, incredibly, 115 people died in homeless services uh, in 2021. So far this year, 70 people are recorded to have lost their lives in the Dublin homeless services. And it does not bear thinking about. <laughs> but those figures are set to increase due to the fact that the, the weather is going to get colder and more severe over the next number of months. Now, these figures were released to AIM2 by the Dublin City Council under the Freedom of Information Act. But if we were to submit the same question to any other local authority in Ireland right now, we would be met with stony silence. Because no other local authority actually records the number of people who die in homelessness uh, around the country. And that's an incredible thing, uh, Taoiseach, that the vast majority of local authorities are not even recording this. It's an absolute scandal. And if we're not even measuring this incredible situation, how are we going to get to a situation where we're finding solutions to it? Now, I've been raising this issue uh, of homeless deaths for the last number of years, and different ministers for housing have tried to explain it away some saying that these deaths are just part of the natural attrition that happens. Others saying, and I quote, that these are the results of car accidents, etc. But the truth be told, and Taoiseach know this, that homelessness is a direct cause of death. People who are homeless for longer than 18 months are eight times more likely to die than a person who is homeless for less than six months. So right now, on the streets of our capital city, people are dying directly as a result of homelessness. Now, in response to me raising this before, the Minister for Housing did commission Dr. Austin O'Carroll, a North uh, Inner City GP, to research the causes of these, these deaths and propose solutions. And I welcome the fact that that actually happened. But there's little evidence, if you look at the figures, Taoiseach, that we're getting to grips with this crisis. Indeed, the government are missing all their own housing targets. The Dublin Housing Delivery Group submitted a report to the Minister uh, for Housing recently, and they've indicated that there's evidence of slowdown in terms of social housing projects, and that work has actually ceased on some sites. So this government is a record-breaking government for all the wrong reasons. There are record numbers of people accessing emergency accommodation. There are record numbers of children accessing emergency accommodation. House prices are at record levels. Rents are at record levels. And last year we had a record for the number of people who died in homelessness in our capital city. All of these indicators are going the wrong way under Fianna Fáil, Fine Gael and the Green Government. Taoiseach, will your government first of all commit here today to record the number of deaths that are happening in home, with homeless people around every county in the country. You, and will you detail the progress so far in the implementation of the recommendations made in the report of the mortality in single homeless population 2020? Again, uh, first of all, I'd say the death of anyone homeless um, is a tragedy, and, and we extend our sympathies to uh, the families concerned. Um, and the, particularly the deaths of people availing um, of homeless services. Uh, and that is taken very seriously. Now, um, I would say to you, though, however, you've made a fairly bold statement in terms of almost a direct juxtaposition between the numbers who have died and, home, and, and, and the state of homelessness, which I do not think the figures bear out. So you quoted the, the RHE records, and Dublin Region Homeless Executive, they record death notifications from all of its funded um, residential and outreach services in line with procedure agreed with the Health Service Executive. These services include support for people in permanent tenancy, so people who have been taken out of homelessness but are in a permanent tenancy, including housing force, for example, uh, long-term supported accommodation and people receiving tenancy support and are therefore not counted in the department's homeless um, figures. So the point is, you have to be very, very careful uh, about how you sort of, are, are you saying that all of those deaths occurred because people were homeless? Not necessarily is the point. Um, but I think also how homelessness is a complex issue in terms of um, the range of issues that can lead to someone becoming homeless. Uh, so 37 of the 70 deaths that you've identified were in the categories that I've just mentioned, in other words, in permanent tenancies. Uh, so not in a state of homelessness, in other words. But nonetheless, it's still, 
you know, it's, it's very, very sad and, and tragic that anyone would lose their life, but, but I, I don't have the specific causes for those 37. Um, but we, to, to be fair to everyone, Deputy, uh, perhaps more research is required um, in respect of those figures before we draw uh, the conclusions that you seem to be drawing in respect um, of, of the figures that you've articulated. Um, I, I believe all local authorities should follow the example of the DRHE in, in how it records um, uh, uh, people within their, particularly within their homeless um, services. But as you know, we're moving much more towards the housing first um, approach to homelessness, which is actually giving people a permanent tenancy uh, almost uh, from day one, if that is possible. Um, so we just, we just need to be very, very careful in terms of how we describe this, how we analyze it, how we research it. Um, uh, and, and that's all I would say in that regard. And the, there is a pilot study on data collection of homeless deaths nationally. It's been undertaken by the Health Research Board on behalf of the Department of Health. Um, and that the, the housing department is liaising with the Department of Health and the Health Research Board on this study. Uh, and I will talk to the Minister for Health and Housing to see if there's anything more needs to be added to that research to get as complete a picture as we possibly can, because the research is very important, because that can inform policy. We saw during COVID how a very strong um, in, in synergy, synergy, synergy between health and housing and the homeless question uh, reap very significant right. dividends for the home, ho you, homeless Fisher. in respect of Herman. being able to um, respond positively to the COVID issue. I'm, I'm, I'm surprised that you teach in relation to this because these figures are very stark, they're very real and there are direct correlations between being homeless and losing your life. So equivocating or fudging at this stage in 2022 after years of this is simply not good enough, Taoiseach. It is, you know, fudging this 15 years ago, 10 years ago, you know, you might have had an excuse in relation to that. But equivocating on these figures and the direct correlation and the, the, the cause and effect that is happening on the streets of Dublin is, is wrong at this stage. And if we're at that stage as a government, well, that's going to be a problem in terms of actually urgently pushing resources into place to fix this situation, surely. You know, Dr. O'Carroll, who was you know, commissioned by the, the minister here, s said directly that the length of time that a person is homeless directly leads to the chances of mortality. And we know that the number of people dying correlates exactly with the number of people who are homeless. And, and, and the truth of this is that people don't have access to primary care, they don't have access to mental health services, they don't have access to, to dual diagnosis services, and of course they're living under the, 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 the exposure uh, of the weather, and in terms of the violence in the streets, etc., and alcohol, uh, alcoholism. All of these are the contributing factors to these deaths. But what's not contributing to solving them is any real government effort or urgency. And I'd ask you, what are those uh, actions that you're taking to make sure that this problem is solved and lives are saved? Over 20 years ago, we put a facility together that married health, housing and homelessness uh, in the centre in Anderson Key, where we gave access to primary care, to mental health care, as well as homeless services. So what you're saying isn't quite true. Um, in terms of sorry, sorry, in terms of Deputy. in terms of the homeless, Deputy. it's long been recognised that homeless people in, who are homeless for a variety of reasons, deputies. Well, I think, look, deputy, to you introduce politics to this, that's fine at the beginning. I'm just making the point. There's a multiplicity of reasons why someone ends up homeless. Not everyone can be. We can't generalise to the degree that perhaps you are. Some, without doubt, um, have significant challenges as they become homeless, which can lead to increased morbidity and mortality as well. But the point I'm trying to make is this. We have to bring the services to the homeless. That's what we need to do as a state uh, in terms of intervening in a positive way in the person's mental health, in the person's uh, medical uh, issues. Uh, and we need to do that by proper integration of services at the front line. So when you say, for example, primary care, it was explained to me by homeless services a long time ago that very often many people who are homeless don't bother getting the medical card, Thank you, don't have a GP. So what do you do? You bring the GP and the primary care service to the homeless centre, or at least provide it in an accessible way. So there, there, there's, it's fairly, uh, in my view, there is a way of dealing with this. We are committed to doing it, and there's been unprecedented resources now allocated to it. Thank you. It was done very well during COVID, and we want to try and maintain that.